the mass appeal. A compromise is an adjustment of conflicting claims by mutual concessions. This means that both parties to a compromise have some valid claim and some value to offer each other. And this means that both parties agree upon some fundamental principle which serves as a base for their deal. It is only in regard to concretes or particulars implementing a mutually accepted basic principle that one may compromise. For instance, one may bargain with the buyer over the price one wants to receive for one's product and agree on a sum somewhere between one's demand and his offer. The mutually accepted basic principle in such case is the principle of trade, namely that the buyer must pay the seller for his product. But if one wanted to be paid and the alleged buyer wanted to obtain one's product for nothing, no compromise, agreement, or discussion would be possible, only the total surrender of one or the other. There can be no compromise between a property owner and a burglar. Offering the burglar a single teaspoon of one's silverware would not be a compromise, but a total surrender, the recognition of his right to one's property. What value or concession did the burglar offer in return? And once the principle of unilateral concessions is accepted as the base of a relationship by both parties, it is only a matter of time before the burglar would seize the rest. There can be no compromise between freedom and government controls. To accept just a few controls is to surrender the principle of inalienable individual rights and to substitute for it the principle of the government's unlimited arbitrary power. There can be no compromise on basic principles or on fundamental issues. What would you regard as a compromise between life and death, or between truth and falsehood, or between reason and irrationality? Today, however, when people speak of compromise, what they mean is not a legitimate mutual concession or a trade, but precisely the betrayal of one's principles, the unilateral surrender to any groundless, irrational claim. The root of that doctrine is ethical subjectivism, which holds that a desire or a whim is an irreducible moral primary, that every man is entitled to any desire he might feel like asserting. and that the only way men can get along together is by giving in to anything and compromising with anyone. It is not hard to see who would profit and who would lose by such a doctrine. The immorality of this doctrine, and the reason why the term compromise implies, in today's general usage, an act of moral treason, lies in the fact that it requires men to accept ethical subjectivism as the basic principle superseding all principles in human relationships, and to sacrifice anything as a concession to one another's whims. Hi, I'm Angel, and I just wanted to invite you out to Nexus. We have just finished our last session on moral compromise, and we're really looking forward to you joining us next month.
August 2nd for our next session. We're going to be talking about social media and its impact on our culture. And we're going to touch on topics that include MySpace, which is exempt, but I used to really get down with MySpace. Facebook, we're going to mess with Twitter, those who like to tweet. We're even going to mess with stuff like ChristianMingle.com. Trying to meet somebody Christian, you can put up your profile and think the Lord is going to bring you guys together. That's all right, I'm not hating, but we will deal with it. E e harmony, equally yoked, all these different efforts of social media to try to recreate how our culture is defined. So definitely be our chair August 2nd and be a part of this. Social media affects me, social media affects you. Let's hear about it. Join us for some intelligent conversation. We're looking forward to seeing you there. See you.